Hi guys, what's up? My name is Brayden Marlowe. I'm the lead guitar at Artificial Oceans. Today I wanted to run through a couple different things, the information about all the gear that I use in Artificial Oceans for our live show. Okay, so the first thing I'll go over, um, we'll start with the guitar. Um, now the first thing that really caught my eye about this guitar is, is really how beautiful the finish is. Um, I saw it and, and I, was, I was extremely interested in that, but when I finally sat down and played it, I found out immediately that, um, in my opinion, this is the best playing guitar out of the touch. The big advantage of having a, a wood and non-satin finish back of the neck um, is the fact that that wood over time can shave down and end up forming to your hand, though. Um, if there was one thing I'd change about the guitar, um, I've always been a fan of a, of a free-floating trim system, and that'd be a really interesting thing to add on with the guitar. Um, this is the, the greatest guitar I've ever had. The second thing I want to go over um, is the rig I run out of. This is a Line 6 Spider Valve HD100. Um, now again, I said that the tube amp design was by Bogner, um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but, obviously with Line 6, you expect somewhat of a solid state, a very digital experience out of it. Now what's so cool about this particular amplifier is the fact that it is two. Um, now that's not something you usually see inside Line 6 amplification systems. Um, however, in this one, the, the tube aspect of it is very, very important, uh, specifically to a guitarist who's, who's trying to fill, fill a room up. Obviously a tube amp is going to be louder than a solid state amplifier, but it also gives it a better tone, a warmer tone to me. Now obviously with any kind of digital amplification system, you're going to deal with the fact that you're going to be somewhat limited in your options. Um, that's one drawback that definitely is something you can, you can replace by pedal boards or, or guitar effects processors and things of that nature. I, I feel like it has more of a, a genuine tone to everything uh, and more of a true tone to what you're looking for. You're going to be able to comb through different tones and make different tones sound the way that you want them to sound even when you're in a situation where you know you may be limited in what amps you can model. Um, this one, the amps are, are much more valuable amps, much more professional quality and, and overall just a better overall signal for those amps. Um, if I had one thing to change about this particular amp, um, I definitely have a couple more effects that were able to be added on. There's a reverb, there's a delay, um, different kinds of delay as well, and there's also some different effects such as a phaser and a chorus flame. Um, but being able to add on a couple of different types of effects would be a little bit more beneficial, obviously, to any guitarist. You want to be able to add as much as much personality to your tone and what you're doing as possible. Um, I use a Marshall. Uh, it's a 4x12. This is from the MD series. Um, now, this particular amp or cab, excuse me, has more of a bassy pop to it. Um, it's very low end, very strong low end in that that cab. Um, if I could take one thing and change about it. I would make it a little crisper. Sometimes my tongue can get a little muddy through it. Um, that's something I've had to account for over time. Um, that's something I've learned to deal with and something I've learned to, to develop around. Okay, so the first thing I'll go over um, with the head unit, um, this is obviously a digital amplification system as a result of it being from line six. Um, that has its good and its bad, it has its drawbacks, but it definitely has its advantages as well. Uh, something over time that I've really taken value in uh, is preset channels because you set those, save everything that you worked for, uh, set everything you worked on, and then you can take that, put it in your, put it in your car, go to show. It has six different models that you can go through, but each model has two different sub models that you can advance through. Um, now, one thing that I really liked about this particular modeling system is that it gives you different sub models. As you can see, as I switch back, you can see it goes from, you know, with the insane metal crunch, blues twang clean. It'll switch between a blue and a yellow, indicating a different sub model that you're using at the time. Now, obviously, those models, those umbrella models like clean, clean is obviously just a clean channel, and you can hear that here. That has a little bit more of a brassy high end to it, whereas you switch to the submodel, it's much smoother, more of a low end. Uh, you go to twang, and with twang, you're going to obviously and, and usually have a very poppy sound you can hear. And then you switch to this, and the second submodel, and you can hear again more of a low end. So the blue kind of gives you more of a low end boost, whereas the yellow kind of gives you more of a high end boost. With blues, you're going to have a very low 
low boost any as it is. And you can hear that kind of scoop there. And more of a again low end boost again for blue. Now crunch crunch is more of a of a British kind of amplification model. Um, so it kind of gives you something something more like you'd hear from from old classic rock from the 70s or 60s, something along those lines. And obviously, like I said, blue gives you a lot of a low end boost. Then you'll go into metal, which is more of a, an older or more of a, a, a thrashier metal kind of sound. And you can kind of hear that in this. And then again, more of a low end boost to that. Now, what I specifically use is I use Insane. And this is a higher end boost for Insane. And then you can hear a low end boost. And I like that better because it makes it sound a lot more polished, makes it sound a lot more defined and crisp. Uh, and that's kind of what I go for more in, a, in, in especially a lead guitar capacity. Um, so that's kind of gives you an idea of, of what exactly those models and submodels do. It also has a, a specific control for bass, mid, treble, and then has a channel volume and a drive knob as well. Now those, just like with any other amp, it'll give you more if you turn this up, for example, if I take the bass all the way out, you'll hear this. Crisper. Now, what I usually set my bass on is around here because this is already a pretty bassy cabinet unit that I'm using as well. And so I don't want to overload that where it makes the tone muddy. And I mentioned that uh, in the overview of the cab um, where it kind of makes the tone a little bit muddy. It kind of makes the tone a little bit kind of too much where it, it feels like you're sloshing. And so you want to make that as clean and crisp as possible because as I've said, um, several times already. That, that's what is important to me as a lead guitarist. Now, your mid, some people, some people like to scoop mids in metal, and I've never understood 100% why, because a lot of what you're doing is going to be involved in the mid range, like mid unit. So whenever you then that's going to have less of a boost if I, like where my treble's all the way up right now, that's going to have a far higher boost than this. You can hear that in it. So I usually keep my mid around here. I keep my mid pretty high because I want to be able to accent those mid strings I'm using and make sure that that's not something, especially playing in a lower intonation, that's not something you want to give up because a lot of times your treble is not going to come into effect as much as your mid because of of the simple fact that you're playing in a lower intonation. Um, so that'll play into that a little bit. Now also. I mentioned it already, your treble. Now I keep that all the way up, and a lot of guitarists shy away from that. I've had people ask me why, and every time I, I, I bring that into play, whenever I turn treble up, because of the fact that I play in a lower intonation, what happens is, is this treble right here is going to end up lost in it. So whenever I'm playing on a, a higher like a higher register, or I'm playing in a, in a very, very high fretting, on a very high string, You're going to hear that a lot clearer and a lot more defined than you would if I was playing with that same exact solo and that treble significantly now. And that kind of gives it more of a, a muddy sound. And whenever I play those higher solos, which I use significantly, then that's going to give you a very crisp, a very clean tone for it all, and it's going to make sure that the audience here's exactly what you're doing for a live sound. And that kind of incorporates gain and is pretty much the gain for the entire uh, the entire channel. Now with a gain that's built into these models already and with that being built into those models this kind of gives you more of the punch that comes behind it. it kind of cleans it up, makes it more defined, and makes it more crisp. Now I keep my drive not all the way up. I feel like a lot of guitarists push that a little bit hard. Um, I feel like guitarists a lot of times will take the drive and they'll turn it all the way to the top. And when they do that, it kind of, as you can hear, it makes it muddy. And you, that's not something you want. You want a crisp, 
clean, a very, very accurate guitar sound out of that drive and out of your gain. So I feel like when you take that, you crank it, you put it up, you put it too high, it's going to end up muddy. You put it too low, it's going to end up, again, kind of muddy and a little bit weak. And that's not something you want to see. All right, now the last thing I'll go over um, with the head unit is the actual effects that it incorporates. Um, now, as you can see, we have... And I mentioned this already where I would, you know, I would like to have a little bit more of, of an effects choice and an effects bank on here. Um, but with the effects they have, they are very crucial effects to any guitarist. Um, so this controls more of a, a, in, more of a general effect, more of a, a specialty kind of effect where this adds a chorus flange and a phaser and then also down here adds a tremolo. So that kind of gives you, you know, it gives you about what you need as far as specialty effects. Uh, that you need. Now for this particular channel, what my main channel is for leads, I, I use, I turn that off, completely off, because that's not something I feel like I need. However, for my delay, I use a delay, just a regular delay. I use that about midway up. I don't want it to be too loud, I don't want it to be overpowering, but I do definitely want it to be heard. I want it to kind of give it more of a, of a presence overall. Um, so that's kind of the delay I use. It also comes with a tape echo delay and then also comes with a sweep echo delay over there. But I use my delay usually about midway up and then that adds a good amount of presence to what I'm doing as well. Now it also comes with a reverb. Again, that's a very, very important tool for a guitarist to have, be able to shape a tone. Um, and it adds a body to what you're doing to me and it adds a body to your tone. Um, so I've added reverb and that's usually about maybe a third of the way up. Just again, so I have enough presence about it that it's heard and the guitar is as is, is omnidirectional as possible um, without being overpowering and it just being a, a sounding like you're dropping a match in, dark, in, a, in, a, in a long hallway, you know. This is my bank. Now that'll go up and down. Um, and that'll give you to this bank, this bank, this bank, etc., etc. Now the bank I use, um, my four presets on and, and my presets for this entire band um, is under 4A, A for artificial elections, and then we have all that right there. And this particular model I have set up is to model a PB5, uh, 5150, and it gives like that punch, that drive, that earnest power behind it, um, and then also I'm able to add these effects as well, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit more cost efficient than purchasing pedals, but obviously buying pedals can give you uh, a, a quick change into what you need at that moment. This is the master volume. It's the master volume. You don't need to know anything else really about it. This is my presence. Now, I keep my presence literally all the way to the top because, like I said before, I want the guitar tone to be as omnidirectional as possible. And I don't want to get into a situation where I take that presence all the way down and then it's not lost, but it sounds like it's just coming from one small speaker in the left side or the right side of the room. So that's kind of... Well, I, I enjoy the, the gear that I do use. Um, now, if, if I won, like, the last week's Powerball tomorrow, I'll probably replace this um, with probably a Mesa dual rectifier. Um, I'd, put a, I'd put a guitar effects processor, probably an Axe Effects 2 Ultra. Um, put that in, you know, which one goes for the best. Put in a Mesa cabinet, probably a 4x12 as well. Um, that way it has like that power, that punch that comes with a Mesa unit. Um, if I had to replace my guitar, um, there are a lot of LTDs that I would really like to have. Um, there are some different Charvel units that I'm really interested in as well. Um, but something I've always really had a, a high amount of respect for is the, the Ibanez Prestige series and the S-series guitars. Uh, I'd probably get a, a, a really, really high-end uh, prestige. Alright guys, we appreciate you watching this video. Make sure you go to our Facebook, make sure to like that, make sure you go follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube page, we're putting up new videos just like this really frequently. Make sure you continue to check us out, make sure to continue to watch for new music, watch our Facebook for all of our upcoming show dates, make sure you make it out to those, continue to support local music, and again, we are Artificial Oceans. My name is Brandon Marlowe, thank you for watching.